Have you had any weird encounters with any popping or pro skateboarders? Yeah, hell yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Welcome to the Beautiful Day podcast. We've been trying to do this podcast for a minute now. It's a beautiful how, day. Yeah, so how long has it been? Podcast? Um, probably like a month, huh? Like we're going back and forth. And it's not like niggas didn't want to do it. Niggas We've is been busy. hanging out all between this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> this niggas is busy. And uh we finally making that happen right now. Uh, this ain't gonna be the first one because we got way too much shit that we've been through together Mm -hmm. and too much shit to talk about that we're not going to get done in one podcast and we're going to start off with the first question now before you ask the first question i'd like to say there's probably a lot of people asking anyways Mm -hmm. why don't you and jerell hang out anymore where are you nigga we're adults (laughs) he's busy He's he's had to live in places he didn't want to live. I had to live in places I didn't want to live. We come from a hard place. Like we don't get to make choices, nigga. I couldn't hang out with him. My car exploded on the freeway. Like he Your had shit a kid. Did explode, like huh? yeah, actually exploded into flames. Why the fuck did it explode? I guess I I didn't I didn't change the oil. And then it exploded. That's yeah. what happened. Yeah, and see, we didn't have our fathers <laughs> very nearby to tell us these things. Like I didn't know it was my first car. How the fuck was I supposed to know? Your godmother took me to get that car. Yeah. Because she's a mechanic. Mm-hmm. And is the only person I knew who was responsible enough to drive my black ass up there when I didn't have a license. Paula was our dad figure. Yeah. Nah, that's my that's my mom to me, yo. But I, you know what I'm trying to say. Was she our, over uh, here teaching us dad adult shit. figure. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But it was funny because you was um on the way to the studio at the time, right? Uh, I was on my way back from working at Pizza Hut, the one in Inglewood I worked at for three I years. I remember you was coming to that. It was a it was a Pasadena a, spot. Nah, it was it was a party. It was like Swank's birthday. Oh yeah. Yeah. And yo shit, this nigga can even get to the party. And then Yike Mike did something to Ryan. I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> Yike Mike, who the fuck? It's just some guy, man, and he offered <laughs> he offered Ryan a drink, and then and Ryan's like, sure, and then he started feeling funny, <laughs> and then he's like, you didn't drink from Yike Mike's cup, did you? Oh, no. <laughs> that was accusing. He's like, you didn't drink from Yike Mike's cup, and then like, Ryan was like, what's going to happen to me? <laughs> like, yeah, uh, don't drink from Yike Mike's yeah, cup. Yeah, do not drink from Yike Mike's cup. Uh, we were I don't know bo- what's in there. We were both born in Inglewood. Uh, that's how we met. Obviously, I was technically born in Beverly Hills on my way back to the hood. We just couldn't make it in time. But yes, yeah. that's kind of player and random as fuck. But <laughs> we both Inglewood, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but were you raised there your whole life, or did you come in like at an early age? Raised my whole life, whole life, entire life in that apartment until we didn't that, have it. that apartment. Yeah, entire oh, life. Shit. Well, like, up, all right. So this is like a, a simple one. So mm-hmm. first, we lived on this place called Large Street. It's got to be around Inglewood somewhere. I never actually Thinking found out. Thinking about you talking about. I was like yeah. probably like one to three years old. And then uh, when I was like four years old, we moved into that brown apartment next to the one that I lived in my whole life. Mm-hmm. And then we stayed there for like a couple of years. And then the rest of my life was in the apartment yeah. next door. Fuck. With all it. the 18 streets. Oh, hell no. This thing was in danger. Um. <laughs> no, I was fine. They're cool. <laughs> they called me Midnight, though. So I'm not sure if it was racist or endearing. It's but definitely racist. Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Those facts. Uh, were you always there with your mom and your brother? Or who was all in that household? Yeah, so first it was my... M- first it was my mom, my brother, and my dad. Mm-hmm. And then maybe when I was nine or something... He left at some point in time Mm -hmm. and not because anything to do with his fault or he was running away from anything. He he had his reasons and he had many reasons and Mm -hmm. trust. Shit was not, it was not a fucking walk in the park. But anyways, he left when I was like younger. I I actually didn't pay too much attention as to when he moved out. Still visited and all that stuff, Mm -hmm. but he didn't live there. So it was me, my brother and my mom. I ain't never heard you complain about your dad too. Yeah, because I've never had any negative feelings towards him. Like he's... He's tried his best for us, and even more so than I even knew when I was a kid. Even more so than I even knew. That's crazy. As I found out as I became an adult, mm. he tried his best. So with that house, I remember going to this nigga house, and we could not sit on the couch <laughs> ever, <laughs> nigga. Yeah. Your mom would not let us sit on that couch. Yeah. How long has that couch been in that house? It, the whole time. It was it, <laughs> like it had been there years. That shit I'm was sad brand on. new forever. But we sit on this shit when she's not here. But I think is that like a black people thing? Because you know how we used to put plastic on the couch? I hate that shit. Yeah. I hate that yeah. shit. Stop putting plastic on the couch. Exactly. That shit hurt. They don't want you to sit on the couch for some reason. Why yeah. the fuck did you buy it? I'm not saying that to my mom, though, because obviously. <laughs> 
she'd probably beat me, but literally, yeah. yeah why so why did you buy it? What's your know? relationship like with your mom? Hmm. Now? Back then. Horrible. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Like, like, I was abused. <laughs> I was abused. Like, yeah, I was. And, yeah. like, definitely, absolutely. I feel like there is love, obviously. She, like, loves me, but I guess it was a, a way of learning how to love me. Mm -hmm. A way of learning to love a person or how to treat a person. She came from a rough upbringing. All brothers, definitely gang activity. That of which I won't dive too deeply into for the sake of her uh, of her character. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to get up here and dismantle my own mother. But like, of course, yeah, nah, I was fucking violent, violently misunderstood, violently beaten, violently misunderstood. I got hit over the head with a fucking guitar, a mop. A guitar? Yes, with my own guitar. <laughs> Your my guitar. own guitar. <laughs> like, That's some rock star yeah. shit. <laughs> that was not some rock star shit. That shit sucked. Uh, yeah, I used to get um, hit in the shower with a... Have you ever gotten this one? Like where, um, And the reasons I get in trouble would be for like little to nothing. It's just misunderstandings most of the time. But it's just the fact that we didn't understand each other. Mm. Maybe she took it as like insulting to her. Because I remember, for example, like I got sick once, right? Yeah. Got sick at school. You know when you're sick, you start spitting up a lot? Yeah. Like you have a sore throat? Yeah. So I was doing that at PE, and then the uh, our PE, uh, I forgot her name, Miss Lindsay or something, older black woman, okay. she had called my mom and told her, like, hey, your kid's sick. Like, he's spitting everywhere. But, like, to her, that was just like, oh, you're making me look fucking stupid. Like, why are you making me, you out here representing laugh. us. Oh, sorry for laughing. And then, it's yeah, like, when you get home, she's like, get in the shower, and then, like, uh, hot water, burning hot water. Yeah. And then she'll take an extension cord, go in there, and beat your ass. Oh, no. Nah. Bleeding. Dead ass? Yeah. Off of coughing and being sick? Off of spitting, yeah. Damn, nigga. So things of that nature is just a misunderstanding, but, like, that's just how she treated it. And I was heavily abused as a child. Did it make you, like, have any resentment towards her? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. In what way? Painful, betraying ways. Like, you're my mother. You're supposed to protect me. Why would you do this to me? I've always loved you, and I just don't understand why you can't understand me. But I was always different. Mm -hmm. I was always different. You, you know, I speak different. Like, yeah. I sound different. My family's from the country. Yeah. They're from, like, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody sound like this. And, like, you know, I guess I do, too, when I get mad. But, like, for the most part, I'm the only one who sounds like this. I listen to rock music. I skateboard. I wore tight jeans. I had my hair straight. It's like there's no understanding. She just thought I needed therapy and God and so, a beating, apparently. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> yeah. Fuck, and she always referred to the Bible as the reason as to why she did it. It was, um, spare the rod, spoil the child. What does that mean? It means um, beat your kid's ass so he doesn't get spoiled or something like that. Oh, my God. And she still holds to that today, saying that, like, I would thank her later. But, like, it's already later. And I, I still don't. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I don't want to do that to my kid. Like, I, honestly, I, I don't. I Not don't. That ever. ass. Um, do you think that's what got you kind of into skateboarding? That's what I want to speak on next. So do you uh, think that you just wanted to run away or... Mm -hmm. So tell me how you got to skateboarding. 100%. Mm. The running away thing is when skateboarding was a usable tool. Okay. So, like, you can use skateboarding to run away. But before that, it was just us being badass kids, man. Bad influence kid was around me. We seen these skateboards at the corner house over there on 104. Yeah. You know that corner across the street from Morningside? Mm -hmm. Fuck. That's exact. I, I'm snitching. What the fuck? <laughs> Yo, that's exact. Yeah, that it was that house. And I'm so sorry if you guys ever see this or if your kids ever see this. I'll give you a new skateboard. But, like, I was, like, fucking 12 or, like, 11 or whatever. Nigga, they grown as hell now. Yeah, right. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we stole those and then painted them brown in the parking lot, like, uh, my apartment. And then fucking... You painted them brown? Yeah, we just spray painted everything. Oh, y'all niggas Trucks and really all. thieves out here. <laughs> These niggas had a plan. I guess so. It was just for transportation, honestly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the only reason. Then eventually you start doing tricks, people get competitive, and so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. But then you start to see opportunity in it. Yeah. It becomes an escape for people who are from the environment that we're from. Yeah. And then you utilize it. One, it was like, I can get away from home. When your mom is yelling at you and you feel like you're not shit, you can at least go have fun and like skate around and shit and listen that. to music on your fucking headphones and rock your hoodie and just fucking chill, be in your own zone. Yeah. So I, that's what it was. And it became something else. It became more. So you stole the skateboard for transportation. Facts. And then you started doing tricks. Facts. But what got you to be like, God damn, you could do tricks. I want to learn this. Just the competition in the neighborhood, I think. You so, remember Tracy? Yeah. He's oh, yeah. I went to the tray flip. 
<laughs> the only nigga who can trade flip. Constantly saying, yeah, you good, but I can trade flip. Like, this nigga think he the best. And we cool with Tracy. We love Tracy, but I got to yeah. knock this nigga off, man. I'm tired of losing in games of skate. Tracy was competitive at that time, for sure. Yeah, yeah everybody yeah. in that little group after school, yeah. competitive as hell. I'm trying not to lose. <laughs> Niggas won't even play me skate because they think I'm so weak. How disrespectful. <laughs> wait, 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 at the school? Yeah, they be like, yeah. I'm like, oh, play me skate, play me skate. You know, argument, and they be like, nah, you're not even good enough. You're not even worth the time. I'm just that's like, crazy. That's heartbreaking. And that makes you want to go harder and get good. Exactly, that's what it was. No, I feel you on that. When middle school, that's kind of what's happening to me because we couldn't afford I couldn't afford and they wouldn't even allow me get, to get skate type of clothes so I didn't look like a skateboarder at the middle mm -hmm. school I went to oh man my mom was buying me like shirts with happy faces on it yeah shit. Like, it's like nigga do you skate but um so that being said what did your mom think about your skateboarding when you were taking it serious did they did she support it at all mm, I wouldn't say support like I'll say there were times where she seen how much I liked it and was more endearing towards it. Mm. But let's face the facts. In the very beginning, it was none of that. Like, yeah. at, like, like there was times where I, when I started going to competitions and shit, like when I started doing stuff like that, sometimes she would like be along with that and be with it. But like before that, like it feels like an argument, anything to really shit on my dreams. Like mm. on, on on that aspect, she would for sure like throw the, it out there. Like or, what? Hmm, let's see. Let's see. Uh, well, when it came to skateboarding, like, all right, all right, so check it, check it. So more so, like, say if it's the littlest things, it's the smallest things, it's, it's like childish kind of. It's like, I didn't take out the trash, right? Mm. You know this one. <laughs> you know this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't take out the trash, and you're supposed to take out the trash before you left. Yeah. She told you to take out the trash. But you know how it usually goes. You text me like five minutes before, hey, we're going to pick you up, just be in front. Yeah, yeah. And then like I say you forget something. God forbid I forget something because she will call you. Whoever you're with, it does not matter. It doesn't matter what you're doing or how important it sounds. Like So say if I'm at a competition or if I'm trying to film clips and I'm like I'm chasing my dreams and I'm doing this, that shit does not fucking matter. You ain't even about to be shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, those are those are funny times though. Remember, I get called home like in the in the middle of filming, yeah. in the middle of it, just because like something that she wasn't happy with, yeah. and she was like, "Well, you're my fucking child. You're gonna get here right fucking now," yeah. or or like shit like, and it's just like, dude, like just because you forgot. Like, to do this, and, like, I'm Some sitting here, shit too. you guys are filming, yeah. and, like, I'm just, like, laying down, like, just praying that somebody lands their trick mm -hmm. so I can get a ride home and not get my ass fucking destroyed. No mm -hmm. homo. <laughs> <laughs> like. Boss. But, like, um, nah, that's, that's fuck. as you start to get good, the support definitely came in. Oh, and there's specifically that one time when I went to Compton, and, like, that's what stuck with me. It was a competition. It was a skate competition in Compton. And that one stuck with me Can't a lot. I remember that. What happened again? We went on the train to Compton. and Which, like, is, which is a distance. It's from a Englewood, distance and uh, it's very dangerous. Multiple trains and we ain't had no money at the same time. Exactly. And of course you didn't pay for the trains. You just hop on. Which is a big risk because if we get a ticket, <laughs> it's done for us. Death. <laughs> like that's it. Like it's death. Death. But like, uh, yeah, I remember <laughs> specifically when I went to this Compton. Like, and like I said, it's out of love. Yeah. It's just a strange way to express it because Compton was dangerous going to Compton was dangerous especially on the train for a young man like myself so she was obviously worried but the shit that was said in between that like on the phone like why are you going over there anyways you're not about to win shit like you're not about like all that stuff stuck with me forever like stuck with me that's crazy always stuck with me made me feel like I I'm gonna be something of course I always drove to be something more than what she thought I'd be Mm -hmm. She thought that I'd be stuck there. She always thought I would come crawling back and I would need help. I never needed any of that. No. I became nah, independent. Man. So she was talking shit. And yeah. you said you wasn't, obviously, there was a point where you wasn't good. People didn't want to play skate with your ass. Yeah. But once you get good. Yeah. But what did you do to get good? How did you practice? Uh, yeah, you know Bro, the answer to that. I, we got it to that. But it sounds, obviously, you did it alone and shit. But explain how you would practice as a skateboarder. Okay, as a skateboarder, one, meet up with Lamont at nighttime in front of Morningside and write down a list of tricks that we want to practice and practice them for extremely long, long times. All night. Or until a car pulls by really slowly. Because <laughs> that would be the signal. And it's just like, all right, let's just go back to my house for now and then, like, you can go home after. Yeah. But, like, it's, 
is stressful, but yeah, we used to do that a uh, hundred times in a row, heel flips, hundred times in a row, whatever trick that you feel consistent at, and then ten times in a row for tricks that are hard, not in a row, but like no, not hundred times in a row. That that was later. I was like, damn. That was that was <laughs> right later for heel, for heel flips. Yeah, yeah it was a hundred times in a row, yeah. like during school. Mm -hmm. But like it was just a hundred heel flips at first, just okay. complete a hundred. Then it was like ten in a row for really difficult tricks. So if I want a hard flip, if you can get ten in a row, you're done. Yeah. But that shit is hard. Yeah. No fucking pun intended. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, but nah. And then um. <clears throat> uh, uh, yeah. There's one other thing I do have to mention though. I do have to mention that my mom uh, was definitely more supportive as success began to rear its head. Okay. So, like, the phone calls would usually go, like, well, it depends on who's her favorite at the time. Like, if my brother's doing what she says exactly and then, like, I'm, like, not obeying exactly, it's like he'll be the favorite or whatever. But then, like, if, say, like, um, he, he fucks up or whatever the fuck, or like, uh, and I'm skating, and like something good happens. I win a competition. Yeah. The quickest to brag and gloat about it. Quickest to tell the world how proud she is. Like, oh yeah, no, nah, my son, he he doing it. He doing it. Like, did you feel like that was fake of her? Did you feel upset yes. about that? Yes, obviously, yes. Yeah. But like, still, that proudness. Like, as you get older, you realize it is actual proudness, though. Mm -hmm. It's just how she felt at the moment. Yeah. Like much like you have a kid, it's much like a child. Like how they felt at the moment, they said some mean things. But like ultimately, when she's gloating, she's not gloating just to like, eh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 she's gloating. But like, but still, it's it's a form of proudness. You're showing like you're actually proud. But it, of course, at the time, I'm like, man, why are you why are you so happy about it now? You definitely did not believe in me. Bro, this, <laughs> but like this thing, of mama used to think I was gay. Oh yeah, <laughs> my mom thought he was gay for the longest time. Probably still does. <laughs> she thought she thinks everybody's gay like but the reasoning is crazy wasn't it because of the ice in the refrigerator it wasn't because of that well that's when it started it felt like no i just think that's when you met her like when you really had to deal oh, with so her. she was like okay they so, got, so, explain so, the ice part they so got. people wouldn't want to go to my house uh, for very obvious reasons <laughs> like you get in trouble if you sit on the couch you get in trouble if you eat food you get in trouble if you don't work and that's what Lamont learned that day when he pulled up. Because it, it was the same situation. We got to go skate somewhere, but I got to do this before I leave or yeah. I can't leave. Yeah. So we have this deep freezer. And she's like, I'm doing something else. She tells me to do something else. Lamont's sitting in the living room and she says, you, <laughs> break, this, break this big bag of ice down to smaller blocks of ice and put them in these Ziploc bags and put them in the deep freezer. <laughs> got like, this nigga working. I'm like, nigga, what? <laughs> I'm like... And then I was like, all right, whatever, you know, it's his mom, let me respect it. So I started doing it. Then I'm looking at that deep freezer and I'm looking at the bag of ice and I'm like, this could perfectly fit in here without all that. And I told her that. That's wild. I would not argue with that logic. And I, told <laughs> that. I was like, why can't we just put that bag, big bag in the freezer like a normal ass motherfucking human being? Nigga, you gay. <laughs> oh, is that when she said it? The first time? Bro, she started, not to me directly, but she was saying that shit out loud. He must be gay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, she made sure to let people know that uh, you were, you could possibly I was like, I ain't doing shit then. <laughs> 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 I ain't doing hey, man. I ain't doing and uh, oh, there's a lot of my friends who have tons of stories, tons yeah. of, some triumphant stories. She's like that tough, that toughness that my mom had instilled the toughness in myself. It gave me a backbone. It made me make sure that nobody's like nobody walks all over you. You feel me? Like yeah. you get what you deserve. Yeah. So that for sure instilled that. And when shit gets dicey, my mom is down for her kids. She is down. Like I got robbed for some marbles. She pulled up to these kids' house with. No. That's incriminating, huh? No, you can say whatever you want. Oh. But I was just saying, no, she did not. Oh, yeah, she did. <laughs> yeah, with a um, a stick of sorts. And we knocked on their door, and then we left with more marbles than they had taken. We robbed them. <laughs> <laughs> we robbed some kids when they marbled. <laughs> like, or like when, um, when some lady at Darby Park was messing with me and Kyle. Yeah, like, yeah. And we told my mom. She pulled up there with a fucking taser and was yelling, who's the bitch who touched my fucking son? Like, That's she's about that shit. Crazy. Like, it's, it's <laughs> love. It's just, you know, like, it's loving always. So even though it was all types of fucked up, horrible times, like, she definitely cared and was willing like to go to jail for it. like she's very emotional. Not like in a sad way, but like, 
She got emotion towards women exactly. to fight. Like, just a tough exterior. Yeah. Like, I think it has to do with her upbringing. As you as you get older, you learn to you learn to or you learn that adults are just kids who grew up and are still figuring it out. They're not just like mom and dad, perfect form. Like listen to them. It's just like, oh no, hold on. They have their own issues. Yeah, I, I have similar. My grandfather was like that, but this is not my podcast. <laughs> like, <I feel laughs> hey man, we can talk. All right, well, if he won't say, it, I'm gonna say just a little something. <laughs> His grandpa didn't let him skate. <laughs> they didn't like him skating. Said it was some white boy shit. Definitely tried to break multiple skateboards. And for sure, he was calling everybody gay as well. It's a lot of shit, too. A lot of other shit. But he'll yeah. tell that story. It's his to tell. So We can relate. But, um, and you know, my grandfather was like my pops. So that being said, though, but um, who was your favorite skaters growing up? Rodney Mullen, Day One Song, um, Chris Haslam, everybody on Almost. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this nigga was obsessed with almost because I wanted to get sponsored by almost, and you almost did. But no tell pun intended. Them. That's crazy. They sent me boards like <laughs> once, I think. But yeah, but um, you're really big on the law of attraction, right? Absolutely. Manifesting. This nigga read books and all that. Same with me. Well, I was doing all that. You're the one who put me onto it. Yeah. Um, tell them how you would use that to get what you wanted. Your sponsors, etc. Mm, for sponsors you. specifically. Why do you drink these things, man? This is ridiculous. <clears throat> okay. I appreciate it. I don't want a beer, though. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So for sponsors specifically, it was one that you taught me. It well, told me. You're like, make a clear choice on what you want. Mm -hmm. Be very specific. And then I remember there was a time where I was really thinking about it. It was between like blind, almost, and joy. Then we went to a competition when Westchester opened, and then we met and in, we bumped into James Craig from Blind. Oh yeah, and then um, he had these banners that he was giving out at the end of the competition, and then I was like, and then you said, now this is a perfect opportunity to make the clear choice on what you want to focus towards, what you want to, what you want to make sure that you attract. Like once you choose this, everything else out the window. Mm -hmm. Dial in on this, mm -hmm. and I chose that banner, hung it up in my room. Every single day. Fire. Look at it. Visualize what it means to be on the team, to be a part of a team, especially this team. And I'd fucking go after it. And of course, there's all types of other visualizations. Like, you know, when you're in school and shit, yeah. there's no way I'm just sitting there focusing. I'm just closing my eyes 100%. and just picturing going on tour with all my friends, which happened. It happened. Like everything yeah. that you visualize, it, it doesn't happen exactly, exactly. the way you want it. It wasn't the same team, but... But it happened. It happened. What I used to do, and I think you know about this, um, it's like this shit deep. So I would be in my room and take notes, y'all. This shit really matters. Yeah, you know it I does. Mean? Study this shit. Your mind is powerful. You need to be clear on it, and you need to always be thinking about this shit and feel good when you think about it. Um, and affirmations, too. I used to be in class doodling, drawing, me, myself, drawing myself in my room, on my bunk bed, getting an email back from sponsors. Now, how specific is I used that? to do that shit every That's day, crazy. and it was always active at the time. And I remember crying, like tearing up because it actually happened. Exactly. Like, that was that was like the biggest time it exactly happened. I got an email back from the, um, the head leader, whatever the fuck it is, of active. And he's a super cool ass dude. And it was in my bunk bed on my bunk ass fucked up rink and dink ass laptop mm. and it happened you feel me but the fact that you're like <clears throat> just thinking about it doing practicing it like draw the, the fact that i was drawing it i'm really deep into that emotion and the details of visualizing it and i'm just are you doing this attracting it and yeah. being aligned to once it? you attach to that Fine. emotion it's like a fucking radio station you yeah. feel me you're tuned in you're able to have thoughts of this nature that give you ideas towards this same goal that you're chasing. Mm -hmm. And if you take action on these ideas, things start to happen. 100%. And I know you apply that shit to what you do now, which to we're going to talk, we'll talk about that a little later. But mm -hmm. besides that, I wanted to ask you some more questions about the skateboarding before we move on. Sure. So what are some struggles that you had growing up skating or just growing up, period? And Inglewood. Being poor. <laughs> <laughs> they are like, what? Yeah, that's the biggest one, I think. Yeah, like, uh, obviously, like, gangs and shit, but, like, re not really, kind of, because, like, I had older brothers, so it's a little different. Like, yeah. they kind of know a majority of the, the gang 
people in the area. So it's like, it can be dangerous, but for the most part, it wasn't that bad. I don't, like, people tried to rob me before, but like, you, sound, you just sound me. desensitized. I can't even say the word Desen- desensitized. Yes, nigga, say it for me. Shit, Lord knows, to it, dude. bro, because the fact that you said you was getting possibly robbed and all that, nigga, a lot of shit will happen to you. Us. Like what? That, like, nigga, like, like you said earlier, when we practice and people pulling up and we scared for our oh, lives. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Dude, remember when we got chased? Wait, were you there when we got chased through Morningside by that white by the white van? Yes, nigga. Yes, oh my God, oh, no. that was scary. That was that scary. That was a fucking a movie, nigga. Oh my God, yeah. It was at nighttime. We got chased through. We are all and skating we that night. Did we the neighborhood too and he went looking for us? Yeah. Oh my. Everybody split. Everybody Explain split. Explain that story, bro. In a nutshell, we were all skating that morning side at night. It was a fun night. Everybody was session in the three stair. This fucking van somehow gets into the school. White van cruising. I forgot who was inside. I know you guys said that you saw like maybe some bald Mexicans, like type shit or some, something like some, some shit. Man, some. Niggas started running, like and this running. Is late. <laughs> it was it was pitch black out. <laughs> Not supposed to be here, and you're not supposed to be in here with the fucking car. Yeah, and we're kids, so we're confused <laughs> and scared. And they chased like if you chase, it's obviously an issue. But see, the thing that was scaring us the most is they wouldn't stop chasing us. They somehow got out. I, they must. I think it was there. the it was the fence, like you know the uh, yeah. the one at the end. Nigga, I was I remember hiding under a car. <laughs> That's real. That's smart too. That's smart. Yeah, I was like, I want to just put a fucking car. You're thinking, thinking. But what else you would go through? Hey, remember, uh, remember? Wait, wait. Okay, now this was Kyle and Osvaldo, but we were skating at Morningside, random day in the summertime, and then like people were breaking into classrooms around the same time. And oh, to be yeah. fair, we also broke into a classroom. We I didn't break into that classroom. I did. Whatever. Yeah, yeah I think anyway, this is crazy. <laughs> I, it wasn't hard. And we weren't doing anything besides being fucking idiots and drawing stupid uh, shit on the I'll board. I'll take it back. I broke into the auditorium. Yeah. And then yeah. you could skate in it. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. You skating off the desk and shit. Yeah, exactly. We want some real time. That's what skaters skating do. Shit. <laughs> While these other, these other fools are just breaking in to break in and like tag and do all this other shit, but we just yeah. breaking in. Anyways, oh, we did it like once and then we're like skating a spot. And then um, we hear that uh, the alarm, an alarm goes off. Like somebody opens one of the doors that's alarmed. And you should know which ones aren't and which one is, but some dickhead opened one that is. Mm-hmm. And then um, we're all leaving through the back side, the back morning side. Oh, they leave first. They leave first. I forget something. I go back to the red ledges because, you know, we usually sit our drinks and shit there. Mm-hmm. And then we go back towards the back. As I come around the corner, this old black bald dude puts a fucking gun to my head. Oh, my God. Mind you, I'm like 17. Yeah. Like, Don't uh, move. <laughs> Don't move. What you doing here? <laughs> like, he ain't tell me it was a cop or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, uh, shit. Like, don't shoot me. Like, yeah. and then anyways, he brings me up to like, um, you know that seven stair rail where the, uh, the seven stair rail, the only Big seven, ass stair, seven rail. stair rail. That's the only rail we, we no had, and we was hitting that bitch. No run up. Yeah. He brings me over there in the fucking dirt and gravel area, and fucking, fucking uh, makes me stay there until these other cop units pull up. Yeah. And then I start getting a call from Kyle, and they're like, "Pick it up, answer it." Oh no! Tell him to come back. No. Like I answer the phone. I'm like, he's like, "Yo, J-, he's like, "Yo, JB's, are you good?" Like, or I'm like. And he's like, yeah, tell him to come back. You know, I'm just not saying nothing. <laughs> and he, he hangs up. You know? All that just like questioned me and then dropped me off at my house. Yeah. Like, which is across the fucking street, mind you. Like, so we didn't go very far. As long as he didn't tell my mom, though, I, I guess I was cool then. Yeah. But fuck, man. I forgot about, yeah, I went through that motherfucker. Yeah, that did happen shit, as bro. well, yeah. That's good. We went through a lot of shit in yeah. England, my nigga. There's some robbery attempts, too, for sure. Lee. Somebody punched him out of the ear, but shout out to the niggas who was on XB3 at the time. It was a tagging group. It was it was like a Rardo or fucking David pulled up, and they are like... What'd you call it? XB3. SMC, you mean? SMC, my yeah. bad. Ooh. <laughs> hey, cut out the XB3 part. That's under 18th Street. Uh, that, yeah. I mean, it's just, a, you know, it's just a mistake. <laughs> yeah, as I always see him tagged in the same place, so it'd be, it'd be hard for me to remember. But yeah, it was like SMC... And yeah, they definitely helped me out. Yeah, that was the. I need to find them. Bro. I need to get them. I need to get them on the podcast, bro. We they still have them. Like I think David is in contact with me on Instagram. David would be easy to get. Yeah, yeah. craziest skaters in Inglewood. Like these are the skaters I looked up to. These dudes were saucy. Had the meanest trade flips, the meanest front big spins. Like, man. But they were game bangers. They weren't game bangers. That's um, that's what. SMC was like a crew. It was like a tagging nah, crew. Niggas doing some gang shit, nigga. I was around these niggas. 
Oh, some of them. Yeah. For surely, but... Uh, and the school thought I was the leader of that shit because I was the fucking... I was, got voted best skater at a high school... Like, what they made you a gang? Yeah, made you a they, general? Like, yeah, the security was asking me a shit. I was like, "What the fuck y'all talking about?" Yeah, fuck them fat ass security guards at the school, man. These <laughs> niggas rolling around in they fucking carts, thinking they all extra important. <laughs> Think they know it all. Never caught us once. Like, come on now. Uh, how did you? Why do you? Why your black ass know how to speak three different languages? It's rude. It's rude for you to put it that way. <laughs> We're just as capable as all these other motherfuckers that speak in three languages. All right, like. <clears throat> We're just as capable. I, I just have a thing with memory. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And not even just memory, because I forget shit all the time. But yeah. something about languages, like, I can just attach to. Yeah. You're thinking about Japanese. What else? Spanish. Spanish. Keep explaining how you learn that shit while I fix the adjustments on these cameras. Got you. So Spanish, I wouldn't say, like, it's a completed form at all. Like, it's just enough to talk to your friend's mom, you feel me? Or, like, just enough to get around without getting hurt or dying or just to survive i could speak spanish just because like i don't know you grow up all your friends speak spanish you want to know what they're saying so you gotta i guess it is studying huh because like you gotta like you gotta tune in and you're like nah what does that mean like why he keeps saying that to me and i don't like that like and they're laughing and then you gotta surprise them at school the next day when you learn a sentence i was like in elementary school and you just keep learning shit and then the music and you know i was always a romantic i'll be trying to sing all the shit i'll be trying to sing all the banda all the shit like me gusta todo de ti, tu sonrisa. like i was i was trying to like I was I was trying to game, because <laughs> like, I didn't have much going. I was short, like <laughs> my hair wasn't really figured out, but I could sing in Spanish. And what is better? What, what are you better at speaking? Japanese. Spanish, Japanese. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Cause I, maybe it's cause my girlfriend's Japanese, or maybe it, I don't really think that's the reason. But it's like if you don't use it, you lose it type thing. Mm -hmm. And I use Japanese in the household a lot more often than I would have if I didn't live with a Japanese girl. Yeah. So of course that's helped solidify it. But even before that, like. I guess going to Japan when I spent time there, which is crazy. Which that is was crazy a big thing for us. To us. Like, y'all niggas going to Japan? We never thought we'd better do shit like that at all, at all. Yeah. <laughs> First time I, I went, still ain't did it yet. I went on my own. I bought the ticket. That's I fire. did that shit. That's Me and Mark. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, second time I went is when I like, and it's through Luis. Shout out to him. But second time I went, uh, they had took me, and then halfway through the week, I was outside. It was. October, Halloween time, I was in a Tarzan outfit, getting offered drinks, because it, because like they, they just see a naked black man in a Tarzan outfit, and they'd be like, oh, oh, Osashi need that Scott, need that Scott. They'd be like, oh, is it cool if I take a picture? And then I was just like, hell yeah, and they offer you free drinks and shit. <laughs> and then halfway through that night, I realized I was talking to some Japanese nigga. He did not speak a lick of English. We went out to a bar, we said we gonna go to a club, and I was like, how am I communicating with you if I don't know the language? I think I know Japanese. Like, I think I got this shit down. And since I, then, I need to go with you, bro. I tell myself I'm not going to Japan unless I go with you. Please, let's bro, fuck it. I, I really would love to. Let's go this to. summer. Fuck it. I'm down. Mm -hmm. What's stopping us? Hey, if any of y'all uh, Japan niggas, comment below. We go be that out there. That's not what you call them. Yeah, whatever, nigga. We go Japanese. Yeah, let's do this shit. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, two claws in and we up. Uh, uh, what sponsors have you been on throughout your skate career? Oh, well, that's a good question, huh? Mm. Uh, definitely on the one that you got me on, Marquisa Premium Goods, which is owned by Paul Rodriguez, Jason Wakazawa, and Nigel K. Alexander. Mm -hmm. Brought to you by. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Marquisa Fresh, which was owned by Jason Wakazawa. Shout out to him for always being such an awesome person. Mm. Uh, let's see. He a Japan nigga too, right? Dude, you gotta stop saying that, <laughs> yo. You gotta stop saying that. <laughs> yo. Okay, uh, what else? What else? What else? You got almost. Almost sent me stuff like yeah. once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was once. And shout out to Cooper Wilt for that. Yeah. And, oh, I forgot about Cooper. Oh, Erased? Erased. Yeah, Erased, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And now, aren't you getting a DGK shit now? Yeah, I am getting stuff from DJ. It's fucking random. Right? <laughs> like, random as hell. And then XL, right? Oh, uh, X Large. X Large. Yeah, shout out to X Large. I, I don't know if I'm sponsored by them. I think they just like me. I don't even think they sent me stuff for skateboarding. Yeah. I, I just think, like, it's for music. I think yeah. it's for music. Which is still, that's fucking amazing. But yeah, hey, yeah. shout out to X Large. Love them. And, Which we gonna speak on the music in, in a bit. But um, have you had any weird encounters 
with any popping are pro skateboarders. Ah, hell yeah. Uh, I just got <laughs> I think remember of it. one. Oh, you got to tell me. Hold on, I'm going to take this off because it's getting hot. I, I just twisted my hair. I retwisted it, so don't look at me crazy. This is just what our people do sometimes. We twist up the dreadlocks and fucking put pins in them so it stays. And shout out to my auntie, man. She passed, but she used to do my hair and do all my twists, but I have to, like, do it myself now. But She was the last person to touch this thing, so... Is it hard to do it yourself? Absolutely. Your arms get tired as shit, and I'm not even parting it the way I'm supposed to or using the right gels or any of the stuff. I'm just kind of being ghetto. How long does it take? Forever. Like hours? Yeah. Why don't you teach your girl to do it? All right. She could, but she's busy, man. Yeah. Tight shit. But, um, yeah, I know I know a story. So, yeah, tell me one. All right, so, you know, I was sponsored by Element. Mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> And I used to hook the homies up because I think I was like the first one to be sponsored in our neighborhood. And I used to get a lot of skateboards. I'm not going to see my niggas struggle. So I'm going to get them some skateboards. Yep, definitely. I me gave up. you a Nigel Houston board. Oh, Nigel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay. I, I got gave it. you a Nigel Houston board, bro. I want to speak about this in so many different podcasts because <laughs> it's so fucking funny to me. So <laughs> should I, should I, you want to continue? You can tell it. Uh, nah, you go ahead. Y'all want you to tell it. I just want to point out that this nigga had straight hair at the time. Yeah, my hair was straight for a very long time. Yeah, this is what it looks like it now. It'll be like a little straight. retwist, but whatever. Not not everything. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so, um, let me make sure there's no pins in my head. Doesn't feel like it. Okay. So, the story goes that Nigel Houston was one of my favorite skateboarders growing up. <laughs> And it was especially awesome because Lamont had blessed me with a brand new Nigel Houston skateboard. It was a sick one. It was a sick ass one too. Yeah, it was one of his new graphics. Like mm-hmm. this is Nigel's comeback. Like so, he just cut. The, wait, no, he didn't even cut the dreads yet, huh? He didn't cut mm-hmm. the dreads yet. He mm-hmm. just came back. Mm-hmm. So he came back after you know being stuck on a farm or whatever the fuck happened to him. <laughs> 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 whatever happened to that nigga? Anyways, we was at Venice Skate Park. They were doing like an Element Make Account, and then um. I swear this is one of the nicest heel flips I ever done off of this three block because he was sitting right there in the front row watching. Let me explain how that looks. So if y'all never been to Venice Skate Park, there's a three block and then there's like these ledges that you can sit on that cuts off the sand. And this nigga was sitting there with his homies right in front of the three block. So right when you land, you can see that nigga in front of you. Yeah, exactly. You run right into him. You run straight into him. So <laughs> I do one of the nicest heel flips I can because he's obviously watching and I want to impress him. It's literally little kid dreams, the stuff that little kids dream about. <laughs> I land it perfectly. Go up to him, say, hey, Nigel, I got your board. It's really awesome, man. I'm a big fan. Blah. <laughs> it's funny as hell, huh? Yeah, it is. Because immediately <laughs> after, <laughs> I didn't even know. You guys are being very kind, but I continued to skate, and he was making fun of me and making fun of my hair, the way it looked. And I'm going to tell you my point of view, nigga. You do that, I just see you talking to him. You showing off the boy, like, got your boy. Boom, boom, boom. You turn around, them niggas point at your head. <laughs> Start laughing at you, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> no, no, my heart is like laughing no, at this my heart. Nigga hair. Yo, these niggas was laughing, the dead laughing. At me. I didn't even know either. They didn't tell me until after we left. <laughs> they start roasting this nigga. So anytime he starts, so his thing is confident. He happy. He like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm doing this shit. I'm in this shit. They get in front of my favorite skater and shit. Yeah. <laughs> then every time he turned around, they just giggling. The shame. <laughs> he just roasted this nigga like some fuck ass niggas, bro. The shame. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Then we go to McDonald's right after, right? And then they break the news to me. <laughs> and break the, this shit break my heart. <laughs> oh no, this shit broke my heart. It dead ass broke my fucking heart. <laughs> oh my god, it really did. Yeah. So um, they break the news to me that he was making fun of me. Whatever the fuck, I'm sad. Whatever, whatever. And then. Guess who shows up at the McDonald's? A Nigel Houston? I think Stevie Perez at the time or something. Maybe it was It him. was uh, Chase Webb. Chase Webb, for sure. I already knew he was in there. but Because, I, yeah, I will never forget Chase Webb because this man walked up to me and said, Sup, dog? <laughs> After they was just making fun of me and I found out. So I was like, all right, I'm going I'm to fucking sock you in the jaw, nigga. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sup, dog? Like, and by the way, I'm from Inglewood, so... Mind you, it's not very often that I've dealt with the Caucasian race, but I'd be damned if I let this little white nigga wake, make fun of me and then walk up to me with some sup dog. You got me fucked up. 
Anyways, before a, I it's like a mockery thing. If y'all yeah, don't yeah, understand niggas, it. I, I, like, I think niggas is making fun of me. Yeah, it's, a mo- it's definitely was a mockery. Yeah, right. Thing. All right, you think this shit's funny? All right, for sure. <laughs> like that's how I was feeling at the time or whatever. Anyways, uh, let's see what happened. And, you know, he, he probably he probably cool now, or maybe he's bigger now. And if it's still an issue, we'll fucking find out. But like nah, otherwise, it's little kid shit. Yeah, we it must have been. Young. It was like 14, 15. Yeah, yeah. I something. think I'm just hostile because I'm recalling it. We was all young. And it's, yeah, you're right. It's the only thing that just sucks about it is you unfortunately was, I mean, fortunately, was that nigga who popping people look up to and shit. And then one of your fans is going crazy. And we from we from the, the bad the area. The actual gutter? Like, <clears throat> yeah, shit. so this type of shit is, you know, life-changing for us to be able to see a nigga like that. And then... It'd be like, for them yo, to this, shit on you. Yeah, this is our earth, chance obviously. to show off, do this and that. Shout out your jeans, dude. And look at this. Look at this one. Oh, man, that fucked me up. Nah, shit, they I'll, took it a step further, too, because after that, uh, <laughs> Josh, this dickhead, is like, oh, oh, Nigi, Nigi, he wants a photo with you. That's he wants a photo homie, with you. That's homie, though. Yeah, he, he's cool. He's cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But anyways, like now just like <laughs> okay, and then you know comes in, takes a cool guy photo, and then somebody on his camp takes a photo too, and they post it on Nigel's Facebook to tease the nigga to make fun of me. Everybody's making fun of my hair. Everybody, this nigga got a flat press. Oh, he got a flat iron. What the fuck? Oh, is that a perm, nigga? Like, can just, we find this shit on Josh's Facebook? Possibly. Uh, you can probably find it on mine. Yeah, yeah maybe on Josh's because I definitely on. We gonna try to find that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we I was can. wearing a striped like blue and red shirt. I I remember exactly. I was I, boy. I was pressed. Look at my fist. If you ever find the photo, look at my hand. I was pressed. I was so hurt. It was like the Arthur. Fist? I was pressed. <laughs> yeah, and then um, and then somebody posted it to Nigel's inst- uh what, before Instagram, Facebook, and then uh, yeah, people were making fun of me, and then I commented some shit like I commented some smart some smart Alex shit, and that nigga blocked me. <laughs> Immediately, <laughs> immediately. Then I seen my mad competitions after that, but no eye contact. Yeah, nah. And Chase Webb did the "What's Up, Dog" thing again, but that's <laughs> crazy, right? But yeah. Yeah, that's what's up. Now he going through what he going through. Uh, nah, <laughs> <laughs> they made fun of me. Oh man, I was hurt. Bro, were you ever mad at me? Because I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. I know. Okay. Yeah, it is what it is. But I wasn't really laughing at you. It's about the whole situation. It's just a funny predicament. Yeah, I it's think. like, nigga, why y'all niggas doing this? Oh, any man. other like in- encounters with any other pros? Uh, let's see. Pros, huh? Because a lot of y'all niggas is some dicks. Yeah, a, lot a lot of y'all, y'all niggas, niggas think weird. y'all them niggas, but y'all and niggas just weird You know weird it's also awesome? Like, after you step out of this, because when you're in skateboarding, mm-hmm. it's like every, skateboarding's everything. Yeah. And like, if this person doesn't like you, makes you feel fucking horrible, all this other shit. There's such a bigger world than that shit. I was like, man, I don't give a fuck about what a skater has to say about shit. <laughs> uh, I feel like, I don't feel like any other pro pro has like done anything detrimental. Yeah. That's like really memorable. You would have to like jog my memory though. Yeah. I can't, I can't remember for you. Yeah. I got some stories, but again, it ain't my motherfucking podcast. I'm sure there's some stories, though. <laughs> um, so he'll go on to the next question, Nick. I've been waiting to ask you that shit. Um, hold on, my bad. I'm going to get the phone and shit. Cheers. You already done? You need another one? Uh, I'll take another one. Type shit. We be sipping. What I like about these podcasts, and a lot of y'all been... um coming in this shit it don't feel like no professional ass shit where i'm just interviewing the nigga like it's a yep. job it's As just I the homies it, having a conversation sitting on my friend lamont's couch and drinking a white claw like shit um and there's so much shit that i have to do though and i'm i'm panicking on the inside but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i am panicking a little bit just going through it yeah so me and you we you and i we made a lot of skits together Mm-hmm. Started and those your, videos. Yeah. Type shit. And you're doing skits now. Yeah. Full circle, huh? Um where do you think your comedic skills came from? Because it seemed like you always had that shit. I did. Yeah, I was always told it as a kid that like I should be a comedian or something. Yeah. Maybe I just watched a lot of TV as a baby. Hmm. I have a theory on it. Cause you know, I can kind of relate to. What is it? You tell me if if you feel the same way. <laughs> from all the bullshit we came through from how we grew up with our parents, whatever the fuck it is, in the neighborhood. Did, did we just like learn how to just laugh at shit to like protect us from, you know what I mean? Like, 
Uh, maybe may, it could be you, but <laughs> <laughs> me? Nah, I don't think so. I, think I was going through shit. Yeah, I was. When you met me, I didn't even like you. Like, oh, yeah. you remember how I looked at you? I was emo. Like, I was. I was. Let me explain how I first met this nigga, Jira. <laughs> I'm gonna explain to you right now. I, I was not laughing, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man, damn, I, t- tell me if you remember it too, because I don't know the exact story. I just remember Hard being at Darby up. Skate Park uh-huh. and seeing this. You were bald headed at the time, huh? Yeah, bald headed ass <laughs> nigga with some big ass eyes, just like looking at me crazy, nigga. Just mad. Did I come up to you and say anything? Did you introduce yourself? I think. I think so. Yeah. I don't know. Oh no! The first time that we no, we didn't talk. Oh, okay, I just mad dog you. I guess. <laughs> Why are you so mad at me? Because uh, you had some type of, some type of notoriety in the neighborhood. Like you were already a, like a known skateboarder, and like I kind of maybe it was a competitive thing. Like I want to be better, and I don't want to be judged like I'm less. Mm. And the fact that you're smiling at me, <laughs> uh, everything's a challenge. It's where we come from. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, even walking down the street, I, I would not smile at a normal person who's walking. I would definitely, like, be on guard. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that has a lot to do with it, too. And then how did we get cool again? I told you to... Oswaldo, I think. Oswaldo. Yeah, he wanted to give a sponsor me to Tribe Crew. I had this crew called Tribe Crew. You guys can still search up those videos. With Chris Harris, yes. Yeah, me and Chris Harris was doing this shit, which I'm going to get him on the podcast. It's a crew. I had a camcorder, like a little handy cam type of thing, and I was just filming everybody in the neighborhood. And I was trying to make a team out that bitch. And I came up to you and I told you to show me some footage. No. Uh, he wanted to show you footage first. Okay. And then he vouched for me. Mm. And then that's when you spoke to me and said, show me some footage. Yeah. And I had already uh, put together this monster me that was that's so good. random. But that's all I needed to see. I want to see who the fuck got the work ethic, nigga. And look at you now. You got work ethic. You did not say yes. You did not let me on the team, nigga. I did it? No. (laughs) Like, what? You did not let me on. Nigga said no. He said, you got to work at it. (laughs) No, you got me fucked up, nigga. You did not let me on the team. (laughs) Did not. How the fuck did you get on the team? I started hanging around because Valdo would, like, bring me to Darby. You guys were filming (laughs) a a Made in the Tribe or, like, Making of the Tribe or whatever the fuck (laughs) it was. A video with him, like, a a team drop video (laughs) to let you know he's on the team. And I would always be there. You gotta work at it, young man. Yeah, I did work at it. But <laughs> ridiculous how this nigga tried to pass it out. Like, look at you now. You didn't accept me either. <laughs> like, I remember. <laughs> you probably hated me even fucking more, nigga. I was definitely pissed. Yeah, I was for sure pissed. <laughs> what are three things you dislike about the skate industry? And what are three things you like? Three things I like about the skate industry is the sense of community, the sense of togetherness, the sense of not separating race, age, mm. Um, sexuality or anything of the sort. Mm-hmm. Everybody who's skating together is just skating together. Like uh, I shout out Ezra for example, Ezra Miller. Ezra. Like, yeah, I did. I never knew how old he was at all, but yeah. I've been talking to that dude since I was like thirteen because he was just a dude at the skate park. And there's mm-hmm. tons of older kids, and I hung out with a hell of an older crowd, and nev- nobody ever thought about it. Nobody thought about age or discrimination. It was just cool. It was cool to see people and have a sense of togetherness. Mm-hmm. That's one thing that's awesome about it. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that's awesome about it is sponsors. Sponsors give you an opportunity to even, one, you can wear cool shit. You feel me? Like, you can actually, because we're broke. We're Prim- broke. Yeah, like Primitive saved my life with the fits. Right? Like, the fits were going <laughs> stupid. Like, when I got packages, I would post on my Facebook so fast. Like, I lay them out all on my bathroom floor. And, like, you'd have sweaters for days. Like, I wouldn't even say fits because, like, I was, like, a, I was a fucking punk. Literally, like, a punk rocker in high school. So, like, I wasn't really trying to do too much like well, i was figuring it out and getting free stuff helped i didn't have to it helped me with my independence i didn't have to buy stuff i didn't have to buy pants clothes skateboards shoes etc because i didn't have the money to do it anyways and like i wouldn't even sponsor my work company he was so it was just like i get boards from all these people around me and yeah. that is awesome thanks to sponsors and it gives you something to like thrive for you feel me mm-hmm. and three i guess it ties into community but i would say team mm-hmm. i have never in my life felt like I was fully accepted into anything. Especially Tribe Crew. Yeah, especially Tribe Crew, because apparently I didn't meet the criteria for them niggas. But, like, I always wanted, like, I because, you know, I was depressed as a kid. I was emo. I was always alone. I had, like, tons of issues. Yeah. And I always just wanted a sense of belonging. I always wanted a sense of, like, being a, a part of 
like a team. And that's why Almost was the specific team because they had Almost Round 3 at the time. And like you can see them on the tour bus and, and Baker as well. Like you'll see them on the tour bus having fun, being together with each other, like going places, traveling. Like, and it seemed awesome like, to just amazing, have a group of friends bro. who fuck with you and yeah. you guys are traveling the world. And it's awesome. And I always wanted to be like fully accepted. I've always wanted to be fully accepted. Yeah. And that shit's hard, bro. It's hard to feel fully accepted. I still don't feel fully accepted by shit. Damn. If I was, you'd see me more often, but you don't. I'm sorry. Yeah, I've always been left out, and it's always felt that way. Damn. Okay, what's the three things you dislike about it? Um, Let's see. What do I dislike about skateboarding? The course, uh, this whole core thing and the YouTube thing, fucking annoying, dude. Just do a fucking kickflip. Like, get over it. Get over all that random, like, well, this is corny and that's corny and, and I can't do this. And why are you wearing a Thrasher shirt? Name three Thrasher parts. I'm not, that's fucking <laughs> annoying. It's irritating. I'm not doing all that shit. And if it's ever an issue with one of these niggas, like uh, me personally growing up, if it was ever an issue, niggas say something. Like... All, all they do is get on the internet and talk about like, oh, this nigga's corny. But as soon as you see me, it's all high fives and handshakes. Nigga, you better keep that same energy. I hate that fake ass shit, bro. Yeah, like, come on now. Like, yeah, we was doing YouTube. You damn right we was. We had to find a way. <laughs> what the fuck we supposed to do, What the nigga? fuck are we supposed to do? <laughs> hope hope that we get accepted? Yeah, let Nigel Houston fucking tease me at Venice Beach because like, my hair is straight. Now. Let niggas kick you off of, of skate teams because you want to make music? <laughs> fuck you then, nigga. Like, what? <laughs> the fuck I'm nah. supposed to do? No. Nah. What about the second thing? Uh, second thing I just like about skateboarding, hmm, skate industry, skate industry, yeah, industry, huh? Um, let's see. Eh, I don't really care that much. I, I was trying to think of something else. Like you could say that sometimes it's unfair due to like you know likability. Somebody's not as skilled as the next person and doesn't mm -hmm. deserve this or doesn't deserve that. But it's whatever. I feel like that's in every industry. That's not going to be just skateboarding. That's just going to be business. If you're likable, people like you. You get places. Mm -hmm. Is there a third thing? I don't really think so. Okay, next question then. <laughs> uh, I like the fact that, that that you like more things than dislike things with skateboarding. That's amazing. Because I dislike man. a lot of shit <laughs> about the skate industry. What's what's life for you after leaving Inglewood? Life for me after leaving Inglewood was what does struggle. What that look like? <laughs> struggle. <laughs> <No>. Struggle. Again? <laughs> yes, again. Exactly. When does it end, right? <laughs> You would think once you get older that like maybe you'll have things figured out the way that you wanted them, but it's yeah. never exact and the journey's never over. Yeah. But um let's see. Um what was the question exactly again? Like how's your life after leaving Inglewood? Oh. <coughs> like what is life like? Now it's great, but before, struggle. So with leaving Englewood, mm -hmm. there comes the eviction. Okay. So, lived in the same place your whole life. It's being teared from under you. And I've always had an underlying fear that that would happen because I never knew how bills worked. I never knew how rent worked. It was my job to, a phrase I heard commonly in my household, stay in a child's place. Damn. Stay in that a child's deep. place. That gets deep. Yeah. And, um, and when I started to find out how things were paid, that's when I started to like feel a sense of power. Because my mom made me feel like, you know, I wasn't paying for shit. I wasn't doing shit. All I'm, I'm just another mouth to feed under her roof, her rules, things of that nature. And then you realize, like, I was getting SSI checks mm -hmm. for, like, because at a young age, I'm not sure if you've been through this before, yes. but, like, common practice, yeah. they'll go into the uh, Social Security building and tell you, you know, like, you're going to have to act retarded. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to act retarded, but, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I had to act retarded to, like, get extra payment. Yeah. And so we were getting checks. Mm -hmm. And when I started to realize that some of the mail was for me and I started reading things, mm -hmm. that's when I'm like, so if I leave this household, this mm -hmm. leaves with me. Yeah. And that became like a power move. And now I have freedom. That's how I, that's how I looked at it. Yeah. Because like this check depends on me. I'm adding some value to this household. Irregardless, everything broke down. I went to Japan. Uh, I came back. The house was infested with roaches and rats. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. That was a big deal for you. Yeah. yeah. There's rat shit everywhere. You can smell it. 
Fucking, you'll hear the rustling behind the couches. Mm-hmm. Ask Luis. <laughs> hey, when you get Luis on here, he stayed at my house one night uh, before he had to drive back to somewhere. And this man was fucking surrounded by it. He was in fear. Like, it's just scratching all night. Well, yeah, I, I'll be scared too. I had this nigga in, in, the, in smack dab in the middle of the hood watching King of the Hill with no cable. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga was like, this how it is. Oh, man. But yeah, um, after that happened, I believe... There was a death that played a lot of significance. After that, I feel like my mom struggled to hold things together financially and and or mentally. But I guess that's for her to answer and not for me to say because I wasn't around very often. Mm. And then, um, yeah, things fell apart. Yeah. Yeah, and then I had nowhere to go. I had nowhere to live. And then um, I had just started talking to Swaco Moore. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a friend of ours. I met through him. He was his producer, and he met at a college party. I only met him a couple of times, but he came back from Puerto Rico, and then... Um, I was out there in Puerto Rico with him. That was, like, one of the best trips I ever took in my life, nigga. Man, I still have yet to go. We're going this year, then. I would love to. But, uh, yeah, he came back, had an epiphany about music, and said he wants to drive towards it, and we're, he's just excited to talk to me about it. And then, like, out of nowhere, he said, well, you want to love me and my dad? And Pasadena, <laughs> mind you, I've only like met up with him a couple of fucking times. So like, yeah, that's all I had though. It was the only place I had to go. Everybody, my grandma's house is full. And everybody's already still at my grandma's house. Brother's still on the couch at my grandma's house. Mom's still on the couch at my grandma's house. Two uncles there. Fucking one grand. Like, shit's tough. It's tough. I still have to figure that out. But yeah, that's what happened. They they all ended up dispersing over there. I moved to Pasadena keep my job at in Inglewood at Pizza Hut. Oh, you was traveling there. Yeah, exactly. Like every day. Yeah. For that four hour shift. Like an hour job. For that four hour shift. Hour drive. Until my car exploded. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's just comedic now if you think about it. It's always been funny to me. (laughs) That might be my problem too, because I just be laughing and niggas probably be going through some shit while while I'm laughing. (laughs) But I swear I'm not laughing like in in like a like fuck you way it's just like why is this happening to my niggas <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's comedically funny yeah, like it's your car like, what do you mean your car exploded <laughs> like like yeah that's hilarious so but, yeah, yeah that's I wanna, where I ended up then I want to get to the music now so ah. what got you into music ah you, into rapping you <laughs> I didn't even listen to rap like I, did, I listened to rap like I listened to Eminem or like yeah, I didn't listen to rap. I didn't really listen to rap at all. I didn't like Drake. I didn't like Lil Wayne. I didn't like nobody. Like I listened. Did you to, listen to? I listened to metal and punk rock. Like who? Children of Bodom, Cradle of Filth, uh, Suicidal Tendencies, Minor Threat, uh, Bad Brains. I guess. Uh, oh, definitely. If we're going early, like so, let's talk early. Then it was just rock. It was like Panic at the Disco, Bless the Fall, like you know, a um, uh, Fallout Boy or uh, uh, All American Rejects. It was like stuff like that. Yeah. And then. As I got angrier, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like as soon as as soon as you learned about System of a Down. Oh my God! I was <laughs> as soon as you learned about them, System nigga. of a Down, yeah, <laughs> it's over from there. Like that's when shit started getting heavy. Now you're like, you know what, Mom? Fuck you! No, like, I, I had to no. stop listening to them for a while. I told myself, I was, I was like, bro, I'm getting too angry and like sad because the the, the feeling it gave me was not good. I feel that, yeah. I was like, I got to stop listening to it. Nigga, I would be pissed. I'd be headbanging in my house, yeah. knocking shit over. Like, yeah. I understand why my mom thought there was problems with me. There, I mean, there was. Like, I obviously had problems. But like, uh, yeah, uh, I guess I listened to all that. And then we were in high school. And by that time, I, I guess I was listening like Necro, like mm. death rap, like mm-hmm. lyrical, like... A lot of battle rap. Too. Yeah, a lot of battle rap, like yeah. idea and abilities, like uh, mm-hmm. atmosphere, like rap music that like had like a, a specific message a lot and like now it's like everything like i listen to everything and i like it but but yeah that's what it was for surely and then you said hey i want to start rapping and i was like all right cool <laughs> and then you told me to start rapping and I, was I was like nigga rap eh. i was like can i wear a mask <laughs> like, yeah, you didn't want to be seen i didn't want to be seen. that was like a thing back then too a lot of people was doing a mask thing. especially when you're skateboarding because people think like when you skate you can't be talented i knew you could rap things. because how quick your mind was working and that's what you said, yeah. And it worked. I I could. We remember you said this school to practice in the house? Oh uh, yeah, we'd just be writing. <laughs> yeah. Freestyling and Watching shit. Watching Selena Gomez on Disney Channel. Yeah. That's when I learned who she was too. I was like, you don't know who Selena Gomez is? I was like, Is it that one? She a baddie. Yeah. She a baddie. Selena Gomez, I love you. Looks like a regular person, but she's very pretty. 
a regular sexy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, yeah, you about to get hurt. <laughs> I know. But uh, nah. So time goes by and shit. So why did you? You don't. You kind of have a rap name, but you don't. Right? You just spell your name differently, right? Yeah. What made you spell it that way? Oh, simple. It's because, like, if you type in Jarrell Ware, you find everything skateboarding. That's true. And I was like, how can you just say Jarrell without changing the basis of that? That's true. Throw an H in there and just call it silent. Okay. And I always want to know this. You know, I've been in studio sessions with you, but we're not always in the studio sessions together. Mm. What is a studio session like with you? What's the process? For me? Yeah. Mm. Like, for Depends. example, like, I have to, like, Especially if I'm making lit ass songs, I want to sip a little song. I gotta get lit. I gotta turn up. I gotta get in that vibe. What What about you? Like a studio session, huh? Mm -hmm. Like a session. Well, I like. did have a studio session recently, and we just kind of got in there. Uh, definitely got faded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, yeah, that was for sure. But like, um, what else happened? Yeah, we just feel it. It depends on what I want to talk about or what I'm feeling. Because sometimes when I just make music, because before especially, the reason that I started doing it is like you feel so many things and you want to yeah. say shit. And like sometimes you're scared. You don't want to say things directly to a person. You don't want to just like piss off your friend. But like you're rapping about that nigga. Like you're definitely rapping about the situation that just happens. Like I'm dealing with people who are selfish and they're dope. Like, it's like so I had shit to say. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, I'm going to express this on a song especially after i got my heart broken oh yeah and that's okay that's why i want to lead off to what song was that that you made you got your heart broken love unconditionally or something yeah shit? yeah yeah so didn't didn't i want to hit a million it was over i think like two that was your first one though right no a million. technically quagmire that was your first solo one though. first solo yeah. uh, no 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 it was popular but it wasn't my first one to hit a million which one was the first one hey you Ah, oh, that's a good ass name too. I didn't even like that song. That's crazy how that shit works. Right. Uh, damn, this battery dying, huh? Damn, this shit going through. All right, we almost done anyway, so we gonna try to get this done before then. Mm. Um, damn, what was I going with that question before this battery started interrupting a nigga? Uh, what was that feeling like when you got that million or that first million on Hey You? This is possible. Yeah, this is possible. Did it build like some confidence? Like, fuck it. Absolutely. Like, I got this shit. Because no matter who wanted to tell me that I couldn't do it, is the proof in the pudding. It's proof in the numbers. Yeah, nigga. That means I can do it. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. And that uh, shouldn't even be the thing that means that I could do it. I, I already, I didn't really believe it as much in myself. Like, but that helped fuel it. And now it's like, it, it shouldn't be the means. Like, whether you see numbers or not, yeah. believe in yourself. And I got two more questions before the battery dies. Got you. I wouldn't have bought these cameras if I knew these batteries were going to be weak as shit, y'all. <laughs> but uh, what do you do now to get your music heard? Whatever it takes. I guess I just post on Instagram, TikTok. Uh, I'll message other people who have accounts on TikTok and fucking Instagram. Like, say that, oh, you do anime edits? Cool. You think you can uh, throw this song on there? Or you dance or you, you play frisbee or you do whatever the fuck on TikTok? Yeah. Awesome. I'd like to throw this song in there. Luis will sometimes use my song still to this day. Mm -hmm. Very appreciative of that because without that, I probably wouldn't have any of my fan base like because that was the main way that people yeah. were hearing my music mm -hmm. that was the main way but yeah. as it became to get used less and less i had to figure out ways of my own and i'm still doing that i'm using tiktok and you're working hard on that shit every day absolutely yeah which is impressive all y'all niggas need to take fucking notes if you want to make it in this music shit which i'm not saying we made it yet or nothing not at all but you definitely got some pull in there people listening to your shit you need to not just make music do other shit figure out the social media shit and the question I want to ask you is, what is the future looking like for you when it comes to music? What are your goals? My goals with music? Mm -hmm. My goals with music is, one, to meet or reach the people that I want to reach. Mm -hmm. Reach the people who are really going to appreciate it, who are going to use it, who are going to take the words and fully relate, fully be able to... Like I, I wanna like I wanna have a motivational message in my music because I don't been through a bunch of shit, you feel me? Yeah. So like I'm not saying I'm gonna make dreams and nightmares or first day out, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to make something that feels like it every time. Something that makes you wanna feel like you're you're not not shit. You feel me? Like yeah. you can come a little further past where you are or or anywhere you wanna go. I, I like to instill that in my music. But the goal is make music, hopefully, or no, not even hopefully. This is the fucking goal. 
create your fan base of your mm. people, people who love you and actually appreciate this shit. Yeah. You blow the fuck up so you can use that as leverage. Use it as leverage to get a bag. Use the bag to build passive income, no matter the medium, whether it be owning a laundromat, whether it be owning some land, whether it be owning an Airbnb. I need to be able to own something to create this income that'll keep generating once I'm gone so that my family will be able to feed itself so I can get my family off the couch. And obviously, get my family off the couch. Yeah. Like, I gotta help these people and I wanna help them now. And one of my powers, I can make music and yeah. music is a way. But it's also just a form for me to express myself. But ultimately, it needs to do what it needs to do. It's your talent. This is what you built for. It's gonna help me get get my people right. Get me right. Type shit. We're still not safe. I feel you on that, man. We're still not safe. I would like to do a part two with you. Um, like real soon. Cause like I said, y'all earlier, we've been through a lot and we got a lot more to talk about. In a part two, I kinda wanna get into more depth mm -hmm. with him and his music. Oh yeah. Last thing though. Go for it. Also, to just have a family. That's all I've ever wanted. That's all I've wanted my whole life. Go back to the Walk in My Shoes interview that we did forever ago. I just want to have a family. I'll link that in the description. And to be able to afford it, you have to have money. Yeah. And I, I and need we don't money. know nothing else but this shit. Just to raise kids, bro. Like, just for me to have kids and raise them and be happy and not fucking feel like they're going to have to go everything I went through, be broke and be poor and go to the shit school and fucking have to deal with gangbangers and shit. Damn, I feel you, nigga. I do not want my son to deal with that, and he's yeah. not going to deal with it. But yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, guys. I appreciate God, you man. guys. We're doing a part two. We're going to get into debt. Debt? Debt. Debt. Whatever the fuck the word is. We can get into debt. <laughs> like, we'll get into get debt. Out debt, of debt. <laughs> like, get out of debt. <laughs> nah, this is a great conversation. Cheers to that. Part Love two it. coming soon. Everything is in the description where well, you can find us Yo. Instagram, YouTube, and whatever else he wants me to put in that bitch. And Bless yeah. your souls. Um, thank you for caring if you do. This was a highly demand podcast, too. People was asking for this shit. Wow, that's love, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm blessed that people care yeah. about me. Yeah. So thank you. So any questions y'all want in the next one, comment below. And we go, we don't hide shit. We don't sugarcoat nothing. I'm not sugarcoating shit. You just gonna hear it for what it is. I'm an adult now. I ain't gotta worry about nothing. One, one, one. Love you guys. Peace.